You've sucked your way to Pantsu Paradise in Galgun 2, and tamed the tentacle in Galgun Returns. <laughs> now the gals are craving that DP. That's right, get ready for some Galgun Double Piece. Today we're going to be taking a look at Galgun Double Piece for the Nintendo Switch. Now there is a special treat for those of you that own all three Galgun games on the Nintendo Switch. We'll take a look at that bonus content. I'll be doing a comparison of the Switch and PlayStation versions of Double Piece, and I'll give my overall thoughts on the game. So actually, Galgun Double Piece is the second game in the main series. If we look at the Switch releases in chronological order, it should be Galgun Returns, then Galgun Double Piece, and finally Galgun 2. It's confusing enough that the third game was called Galgun 2, but even more confusing for Switch owners since the release order was all mixed up too. First released was the third game, Galgun 2, then the second release was the first game, Galgun Returns, and then finally with the third release being the second game, Galgun Double Piece. <laughs> So hopefully that is uh, confusing enough for you. Honestly, don't even worry about it though. You can play the games in any order. The stories are mostly isolated and there isn't much connecting the games to one another anyway. So feel free to play them in any order you want. The Switch releases of Galgun always seem to be more definitive editions compared to other console ports, especially when it comes to banging more for the buck are bang, more bang for the buck. Galgun DP is no exception. This release includes almost all of the costume DLC from other ports, plus a ton of new stuff too, which is a huge savings. For example, the MSRP is only 40 US dollars, but if you were to buy all of the included content separately on a different platform, it would add up to over $150, and you still wouldn't have everything that's included here. 38 different costumes to choose from in the dressing room, plus you can mix and match accessories and items. If you guys know me, you could probably guess my personal favorite is the gothic kitty outfit. It is so cute. For those of you that are new to this series, Galgun is an on-rails shooter, but instead of shooting bullets, you are shooting your pheromones all over the girls in attempt to tame their violent lusting urges. Now where do you suppose you're firing these pheromones from? Well, your guess is as good as mine. That is where you use your imagination, my friend. There are all sorts of interesting situations in this game that can be taken innocently or not so innocently, depending on how your brain is wired. For example, Maya here is stuck to the ground in something sticky, and you're just tugging on her to help her back up, right? Or does it look like you're doing something else to her? Is that innocent tugging? I, I can't tell. Each girl has different weak spots. For some girls, it could be more effective to fire your filth in her face, or maybe her chest, thighs, or feet. Different girls like it different ways, but if you can remember their faces and what they like, you'll be able to plow through them in no time. One thing I really like about the Galgun series is that each of the games has a different feel to it. So they each have their own identity and it doesn't just feel like more levels for the same game. For example, the controls, the camera, and zoom all work differently in Double Piece. This time we have X-ray vision well zoomed in and that lets you see through certain objects including clothing. Now the X-ray power is very weak on clothing unless you get the angel eye drops to increase the effect. And this is why I like Double Piece so much. And no, no, it's not because I can see their underwear. I would never. It's because of the gameplay mechanics that result from that. This is where a lot of the replayability comes in. Hidden throughout the level are student information cards, outfits, items, and sometimes you'll need that x-ray vision to find these in a bush or behind a locker door. You'll also want to use the x-ray to scan each of the girl's measurements and add them to your student roster. If you want to collect all of the information on the girls, you'll need to scan each of the girls' three measurements separately. 
So lots of information to gather. I love little collectibles like this. Just be careful if you choose the ribbon costume because there won't be the usual undergarments covering things beneath the ribbons. You know, just a little warning so you don't accidentally pick that and see something that you didn't want to. Now, if you're playing through all of the chapters straight, the game could feel a little bit short, but it's not over. You'll be doing multiple playthroughs. Each time you'll probably want to pursue a different love interest and that'll sort of change things up for you. So you might be exploring different areas of the maps or find new things that weren't there in previous playthroughs. Uh, there will be new mini games along the way as well as different story elements. And this will all unlock more CG in your gallery and unlock new levels or mini games to play in the score attack mode. As you get better at the game, you'll also unlock new personality traits to choose from when you start a new playthrough. This will affect which starting stats that you have. Obviously, the ultimate goal here is to unlock that TFG personality, which you'll earn from achieving above S rank in story mode. All right, so let's take a quick look at how the Switch version differs from the PlayStation 4 and Vita. From what I remember, the load times on the Vita were pretty long, and it's actually not too bad at all on the Switch. So, testing the same level in all three versions. I'm actually really impressed. Both the PlayStation 4 and Switch versions load in 11 seconds. I wasn't expecting them to be on par with each other. Uh, and then the Vita version takes a whopping 33 seconds. It's probably decompressing assets or something. As for the graphics, the PlayStation 4, as you might have guessed, has the sharpest picture and it's running at 60 frames per second. The Nintendo Switch is rendering at a lower resolution, but it still looks very good, especially when running in handheld mode. And it's running at just a little over 30 frames a second, but perfectly acceptable, very playable. The Vita, obviously running at the lowest resolution and unfortunately the lowest frame rate, between 15 and 20 frames per second. Unreal Engine is a bit bloated for something like the Vita. I know this game could have run a lot better if it were optimized and running on a custom engine, but hey, what are you gonna do? I still had a lot of fun playing this on my Vita back in the day. Coming back to it now though, it does feel a little bit rough, especially after playing on the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. Now this Switch version does have a few differences from the PlayStation 4 and Vita versions. First of all, it has an extensive button configuration menu, which is very nice. There were only like four or five different buttons you could configure in the PlayStation 4 and Vita versions. Uh, so this is really nice to see that. And there's actually three tabs worth of button configuration. Also, you may have noticed there is a mom walked in button. <laughs> this was not in the PlayStation 4 or Vita versions either, uh, but just press the minus button on the Nintendo Switch and this lovely screen will pop up. Sadly, you can't really navigate any menus or anything in here. It's just a static screen. This, by the way, was carried over from the PC release and uh, Galgun Returns had something like this in it too. As I've mentioned before, this version has almost all of the DLC outfits from other platforms, including several extras, 38 outfits in total. There is a brand new opening movie, keeping it fresh, looks nice. Oh yeah, and the bonus content for owning all three Gal Gun games. So in addition to all of the costume DLC on the PlayStation and Steam versions, there were three other DLC options available in North America, or two in Europe. So these were the pork buns for $10, and when you bought that, it would get added to the Academy shop. So in a playthrough, you can spend 1,500 feathers to increase the chest size of all characters. Then there was the Angel Cutting Board DLC, also $10, and then that would add the 1,500 feather option to the Academy shop, to reduce the chest size of all characters. Those two DLCs, normally $10 each, $20 total on Steam or PlayStation, but they are automatically enabled in the Switch version if you own the other two Galgun games. As for the third DLC, unfortunately, I didn't see that in the Nintendo Switch game, and I blame Europe, <laughs> just kidding. But that was actually a $90 DLC on PlayStation and Steam. Supposedly it was a joke option, but it was functional. And that would make the clothes completely transparent when using the X-Ray. 
but uh, the angel eye drops that are in the game now are already almost completely transparent as it is, so it really doesn't do that much extra for $90. Um, so as far as I could see, that isn't available anywhere in the Switch version, but I could have missed it. But yeah, it wasn't in the usual spot that it would be in, unfortunately. Double Piece is one of the more lewd of the three Galgun games, but consequently, it seems less polished than Galgun 2 or Galgun Returns, which honestly makes sense since Galgun 2 is a sequel to Double Piece and Galgun Returns was a remake of the first game. There is a simplicity about this game that I just love. It feels much less cumbersome to me than something like Galgun 2, and it gets straight into the action a lot faster too. I do have one minor complaint with all versions of Double Piece, and that is with the angel eye drops, pork buns, and cutting board. So any changes you make in the dressing room are saved across all game modes. Great, perfect, but the changes that are purchased with feathers in the Academy Store are only for that one story playthrough. So I can't use Angel Eye Drops, Pork Buns, or Cutting Board in Score Attack. I really wish I could because those are things that don't even affect the score or give you any sort of advantage, so they should be allowed in Score Attack. But I am really enjoying Galgun Double Piece again, even though I own the PlayStation 4 and Vita versions already, it's very nice to have a higher performing handheld version. And with all of the costumes, I had so much fun going through all these costumes, they make a big difference because I can actually completely change the look of my game with each playthrough I do. There's so many costumes to choose from. They're so fun and really cute too. All right guys, well this has been Galgun Double Piece for the Nintendo Switch. Again, MSRP is only 40 US dollars and that includes all of the costume DLC. So many different costumes to go through. Uh, definitely worth it in my opinion. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, I will see you later.